And I will be your moderator. Good morning. My name is Dr. Felicia Smith from McKinney, Texas, and I will be your moderator for this class. Today is Friday, April 1st, 2022. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international unstarted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of divine vision and revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, the United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lords many and Gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and the original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is the title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on the Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title. 
may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. In this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and to write the New Covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. Our 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law our so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and both modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered into the sons of children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. This morning, we will have a prayer by Dr. Andre McDaniel from Southfield, Michigan. We'll have a song, and then we'll have the scripture lesson, Matthew, the second chapter, read, excuse me, I apologize. The scripture lesson will be read by Dr. Andre McDaniel, and we will have a prayer by Dr. Graciela Underwood. Let us take this opportunity. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we want to thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon the sons in these latter days in opening up our hearts and our minds through your son, Yash Messiah, allowing us to hear and to understand the things that need to be understood for our soul salvation. We ask that you continue to help each and every one of us through our trials and tribulations, whether they be physical, emotional, or spiritual so that we can be strong and steadfast in the faith and help another to also become knowledgeable of you. We ask that you continue to help us with regard to the things that are being said in these classes, whether they be physical classrooms or Zoom, and that you help us when we're alone and by ourselves, that we continue to study so that we can be approved of you in that we know for a surety that you are our savior through Yash Messiah and that we will let another know the same. Hallelujah. Let's all say hallelujah. 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 Uh, today I'm going to sing, Ain't That Right? Moses was a baby now, ain't that right? He was born under a death decree. His mama put him in an ark now, ain't that right? Pharaoh's daughter said, he'll always be a son to me. 
Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story tells of Yahshua, and they're really tight. King Darius was pleased with Daniel. Ain't that right? Put him over all the president's men. The men would move with fear and envy. Ain't that right? And poor Daniel ended up inside the lion's den. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story tell of Yahshua, and they're really tight. Now, don't you fret about poor Daniel. Ain't that right? The evil plan did not succeed. The lions ate the men, their families. Ain't that right? And Kandarius through Yahweh made a new decree. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story tell of Yahshua and it really tight. The prince of peace are born a baby. Ain't that right? So if you knew him there in Galilee. He was taken down to Egypt in the dead of night. And King Herod said, he'll always be a plague to me. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story tell of Yahshua and the really tight. Lord and prophets point to Yahshua now. Ain't that right? Give us witnesses to help us see. The burial resurrection principles are really tight. They were showed they were they show Yahshua to they show Yahshua was sent to make us people free. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story tell of Yahshua, so they're really tight. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. It points to the Messiah, so you know it's right. Ain't that right? Yes, it's right. The story is told of Yahshua, and they're really tight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can now have our scripture lesson, please. Morning. Scripture lesson would be Matthew, second chapter. I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with the ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Matthew, second chapter. Now, when Yahshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came Magi from the east of, to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them where the Messiah should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the cities of Judea, of Judah, for out of these shall come, he come forth unto me, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the Magi, inquired of them diligently, diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till they came and stood over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Miriam, his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of Yahweh in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise, and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. 
for her I will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod in fulfillment of that which was spoken of Yahweh by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the Magi, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the Magi. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are no more. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of Yahweh appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, and the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned by Yahweh in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, in fulfillment of that which was spoken by the prophets, that he should be called a Nazar. And that was Matthew, the second chapter. Hallelujah. We thank everyone who participated today. And now I'll turn the class over to Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that we were all able to assemble together. And when I was reading through the scripture reading just now, I noticed about the women that were crying in Ramah because of the death of the children. And it was not like just with Moses, the males, it was male and female. And I was just noticing um, Dr. Mariah talked about in the class the other day how the people in um, the indigenous populations or the well, what we used to call Indians in Canada had the Pope over there and they were telling him of all the horrible things that happened when they were taken from their homes and put in um, Catholic boarding schools in order to make take the Indian out of, take the, the native ways out of the Indian children and sort of to make over the whole generation. And um, now the Pope has come to apologize. And I was just seeing here that he has delivered a formal apology for the grave harms caused by Canada's residential schools and they were saying that many, I was just listening to it today, many um, children were killed in these schools. And um, it was so evil that they even had the children bury the children that had died. So you could see that mystery of iniquity doesn't, doesn't love the truth and was killing just like you have it all the way back in Herod. So this is still Satan's physical kingdom if you don't see him and understand him. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, everyone, and uh, good afternoon to some. Praise Joshua Messiah. Well, uh, yesterday we got uh, started back on the 40-plate um, chart presentations, and we had Dr. Leon Grayson from Detroit, Michigan, uh start his plate 27 he didn't have time to finish it so um we want him to be able to finish it and since the scripture lesson kind of uh goes along with his plate and the next one uh it would be a good thing for i mean just to start right in and let let's hear from them so dr leon grayson from detroit michigan uh plate number 27 uh is Excuse me, Bonnie, Dr. Snyder raised her hand. Oh, okay, sure. Dr. Snyder. Good morning. Can I just say something about the scripture quick? Sure, thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we, we usually do talk about the scripture first, and I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, I just want to say something about this second chapter here that is so, you know, all these things that Yahshua came in and fulfilled and did are just great to look at. But if you think about the way that Yahweh set up the purpose, what you have is you have these two mysteries being revealed. And really, you have to go to the scriptures to see how they are actually you know, being manifest. And right here with Herod, you have a type of the mystery of iniquity that is so clear, you know, in the, in the way that he did things. So I'm just going to skip through here. I'll read it myself so I can be quick and just bring out a couple points about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the third verse, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. So when he heard that there was going to be a king born, king of the Jews, Yahshua, he was very troubled. And, you know, if he had known the scriptures, he would have known that, that, that he was coming, you know. But um, anyway, that, that's part of what you're looking at. And so then verse four, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah should be born. So he's demanding. Now, when you're just asking somebody like a, where, where are you going to have your baby? You know, you wouldn't like demand somebody. And I, I think it's interesting the way these words are put in here. He demanded where he'd be born. It's showing you a nature with him. So then I'm going to skip through um, the fulfillment there. But then in verse seven, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Jerusalem and said, go and search diligently for the young children, <laughs> okay, for the young child, and, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. I'll be right with you while about five minutes. Okay, so then if you jump down, and you have also with Herod, he, he spoke privately to them, so it wasn't something that he's just telling everybody, all right? And that's another way that you're looking at this mystery of iniquity. So then 13, and when they had departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And then you go through, you know, I don't want to read the whole thing, but see how he was sneaky, he was... He was really going to destroy him. And he, and he told them there, um, you know, I, I just want to come and worship him too. No. <laughs> See, he, he, he inquired of the wise men and he, he was just sneaky and rotten and a good type of the mystery of iniquity to look at. And we must remember that the scriptures, a lot of them, you're showing so many things in them. But one of the things is you're showing the nature of both mysteries coming through there and how they... Um, how they manifest uh, the way that Yahweh has set this thing up. So I hope that somebody got something out of that. Praise Yahshua. Praise Yahshua. Somebody else raise Praise. their hands. Somebody else had something to say about the scripture reading? Dr. Robinson? Uh, yes, I'm sorry uh, to take anybody's time up, but uh, I looked, I looked in my uh, King James Version, uh, the uh, red letter, uh, and also, I, I can't find it here in the Holy Name. What is Magi? Who are Magi? I'm sorry. Can anyone answer that for me? Who were the Magi? Good question. Well, the King James calls them the wise men, you know, but, uh, <laughs> well, there, of, of course, you got, I think what's uh, Dr. Leon Grayson talked about it yesterday. Uh, when you have the prophecy uh, about uh, Numbers 
17-24, isn't it? Or 24-17, I think it is. 24-17, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. 24 and uh, 16, 17. Yeah, that's right, Frank. Yeah. All right, I'll read it. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. So when it says there's going to come a star out of Jacob, didn't we? Didn't you just read there where it talked about the wise men and the uh, magi is what the holy name says, uh, and the King James says wise men. Well, they're wise in the scriptures because they said we've seen a star. You understand? Uh, in the east, and we're come to worship him. Uh, so it's because they they knew what you know. I mean they. Uh, uh, it's it's a uh, and so they know about the scriptures and Bethlehem and and then they and then he said well where should he be born uh, in Bethlehem of Judea why is that mm -hmm. because that's in Micah five and two and that was covered yesterday so you can see their wise in the scriptures see that and uh, so uh, and then. Uh, as was talked about yesterday, um, they gave them gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, uh, you know, gold's the, the most holy place. Uh, metal, frankincense is in the, uh, at the incense and the altar of incense, and myrrh's in the holy anointing oil. So it just, and he was covered by Dr. Grayson. Yes, I'm just reviewing what he said. <laughs> um, you know, these are the, just like they gave, gifts to the the uh, or they were uh, free will offerings to uh for the tabernacle to be built well like he said yesterday yashua is the tabernacle and he's the temple so those are the same substances for that plus they're going to go down into egypt and uh when you have some gold you got some money to go down and travel you understand and <laughs> be able to stay down for as long as you need it too I mean, you're always the almighty, he's still the almighty provider, if you know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that's what, I mean, just like, it, that's why we're told to look at both ver versions of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, you got wise men and then he's got magi, but. Uh, just uh, by, uh, Dr. Uh, Lewis, uh, just by it being capitalized made me think that there was a particular name, but I understand about the wise men coming. I'm sorry, uh, I had no electrical power yesterday, so I didn't hear uh, uh, Dr. Grayson's lecture, so thanks for going over that for me. Thank you. You're welcome, praise Joshua. Um, so yeah, the scripture lesson more or less uh, covers his plate and also uh, Dr. Ruth Samuel for plate 28. So uh, as we said earlier, if there's no other uh, comments there, we uh, would like uh, Dr. Leon Grayson to finish his plate number 27, conception, birth, and flight. Uh, I say good morning. Uh, 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 sometimes good afternoon uh, to the assembly, and uh, we are uh, at this time we're going over the plate twenty-seven as stated, and we're getting this plate from uh, the chart uh, uh, series number two, <clears throat> and um, we was on that yesterday. Right, went through a few things that was stated, um, and we realized that Yashem Sire his conception his birth and his flight, that's the manifestation of the sign of Yahweh being manifested in the earth plane. Now we see the physical sign. See, now that's how you get light is from that physical sign. Now Yahshua, if you go back with Moses, you'll see that uh, when he sees the creation, we won't try to cover too much of that, but we'll go back to Moses when he sees the creation, 
the sign is placed in the heavens on the fourth day. Now, um, you can see uh, that uh, that number four, so when Yahshua comes in, see, he got to come in on the 4,000th year. See, just like the fourth day, so you just either add or subtract those zeros. And see, also, you got the children of Israel, they've been down in Egypt for 400 years. So Yahshua Sai, he's appearing at the appropriate time to be the savior, see. And then when you go with Lazarus, he waited until the fourth day, see, uh, to resurrect Lazarus, which shows forth that he is the resurrection. So now uh, it says that Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, see, uh, so whoever should believe in him should have everlasting life. See, now, as we had went earlier, showed that Joshua, uh, see, uh, he delivered the children of Israel, and that was a great and, and, uh, and uh, uh, event that took place in Egypt. And it's one of the greatest events that's ever happened in this world, physically. <laughs> so when they come out of Egypt, all those nations realized that, you know, that was the son, see, and, and, and his name was Joshua back there. And when he come in to fulfill, see, now he's coming in to save mankind. See, now Israel was a, was a, was his people. And uh, now we were, uh, Yahshua just make it known that we're all God's people. And this time, they say coming the second time, but he'd been here, see, uh, and uh, on the day of Pentecost, he, he uh, uh, poured out his spirit. So now, we want to go back to where we was trying to pick up uh, somewhat area we was in uh, yesterday. And as we would see that uh, Yahshua could see the Nazareth, and then uh, he goes, uh, now what caused him to go to Bethlehem? Well, the reason why he goes to Bethlehem is the fact that they, uh, could you read Luke 2 and 1? Yeah. Luke 2 and 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Sirius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Okay, so this, uh, okay, excuse, I mean, uh, excuse me. Uh, showing forth that that's why they left Nazareth. So Yahweh's calling them to, uh, take a trip or uh, to travel to Bethlehem. The reason why they're going to Bethlehem is because they got to pay taxes down there. So while they are down there, this is when Yahshua is born. So he's born in the city of David. See, now uh, we know that, see, it's, it's spirit law that's it's causing them to, to migrate or, or to go uh, from uh, Nazareth to Bethlehem. So now, uh, uh, at this time, see, they, uh, they're at Bethlehem, this is when the wise men and the shepherds, see, the shepherds, uh, <clears throat> they was out there raising their sheep, and uh, they, it was uh, uh, the angels of the heavenly host, uh, see, uh, appeared to those shepherds and uh, told them about the birth of Yahshua. And they went and gave uh, uh, praises to uh, Yahshua. So now then after that, also the wise men too. They goes and uh, as uh, stated earlier, that they gave to give obedience of uh, 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 praises to Yahshua. Now the wise men, after C. Harrod had instructed them to come back and to tell where, where Yahshua was born at as we read, I think, in the second chapter. 
but the wise men didn't do that. Instead, they they went on because they was they went in that city. See, they they was a far, uh, they was traveling, so they did not go back to Herod to tell them that uh where Yahshua was born at. And this is what Herod he got mad as we read. See, he's he, that, that he was mocked, so he caused a death decree to take place. And um, as you read there, and uh, I think we had read earlier about Rachel weeping for her children. And uh, so there's a death decree. In other words, Harold had those boy babies from two years under. See, he wanted to uh, have them killed, looking for Yahshua. As you read back there with Moses, same situation as, as Pharaoh, he's trying to... Uh, uh, destroy those boy babies because he didn't want to lose his his seat of authority or his power. So he did. Likewise, he had all the ba boy babies for two years under uh, kill. Now, so what happens is after uh, the wise men, they depart and they didn't go back to Herod. So after they departed, the angel I think you read that Matthew 2 and 12. Matthew 2 and 12. And uh, this is out of a King James Version of the Bible. And being warned of Elohim in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You know, the wise men, they, they went their own way. Mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And uh, do you want me to keep going? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Yahweh, by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. See, now, uh, you can read. Uh, I also want you to read Luke uh, 2 and 41. Uh, yeah. Luke two forty one. Mm. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they mm. went up to Jerusalem at the custom of the feast. And when they had filled the days, as they returned, the child Yahshua tarried behind in Jerusalem. Okay. And Joseph, mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I just want to vindicate that Yahshua was 12 years old when they uh they, they left up out of Egypt. See, now why he got to be 12? See, Yahshua's fulfilling uh the law and the prophets, just like it was 12 tribes, see, that came out of Egypt. See, and he's uh down in Egypt for 12 years. So that's him fulfilling, like he said, that's what he come in to do. It's to fulfill the law and the prophets. Now, see, now, as they stated earlier, see, um, all this is a prophecy. Now, just like uh, it, was, it was prophesied, uh, the edicts of Octerex. See, he made an edict that, uh, uh, that uh, could you get 925 uh, in Daniel? Daniel. Mm -hmm. Artaxerxes. Right, Artaxerxes. Right. So this is Daniel 9 out of the King James Version. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build to build Jerusalem to the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay, so that's showing you the edicts that Jerusalem should be uh, 
uh, restored. Now, if at the time that e that edict was made, and um, you can find that in volume four, where uh, uh, you find that uh, the edicts of uh, our T-Rex was in the year 457. And if you add 33 on to that, see, you're going to have a 490 year cycle. We just read, read in the case that y'all should not append of being born at any given time. See, he's born on time, and everything he's doing, he's doing it on time. So just like your heart beats, say, uh, 70 times per minute. See, now, the reason why that's doing that, and then they say a child's uh, heart began to be in the seventh, uh, seventh week of, of him being conceived it. So we just showing that Daddy Dix is a seven or a 490 year cycle. And I'm sure someone can deal with that much more. But anyways, that's what you got, that 490 year cycle. See, just like your heart be 70 times a minute. Show you that we are now our own, uh, uh, we was created. Mm -hmm. and, and everything about us is a reflection of our heavenly creator. And, uh, you know, the way the man is made of spirit, soul, and body. See, now, uh, see, and, uh, Yasha Messiah, see, now, he came into the world to be the savior of the world. And uh, when you uh, 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 realize, like, the world tells you that he was just a prophet. He was a man that just walked around on earth. But that was Yahweh in a physical body, and that was his son. And and really, the uh, uh, reality of it, he's the only one that can really, all the, all the angels, see, he's the only one, I, I, I think I read, uh, uh, Dr. Kenneth said uh, that he's the only one that could reproduce or uh, make uh, 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 an, an angel. See, nobody, no one else, can, none of those angels had the ability to reproduce. Uh, but, but he's the only one, see, that, uh, see, in other words, uh, See, put a new spirit in us. See, no, no other uh, creature had that ability. See, uh, to, uh, to uh, why? Because he's that seed. And you go back in Genesis, see now, so uh, you see that uh, he was that seed that was planted. And he told him, he said, now, seed won't live until it dies and be planted. Just like the physical uh, on the third day, see the seed of vegetation. See, and uh, Yahshua really was that seed, and, and he told Abraham, in thy seed, he didn't say seeds, see, that he would bless all nations. And Yahshua was that seed that was planted. See, and uh, when he, uh, uh, I'm going to get into the other part, but he's the one, that's, that's, that's that seed that, uh, that was supposed to have been planted, is Yahshua Messiah. See, now, and... Uh, we, uh, now, he, Yasha said these words, and I think that John 14 and 3. John 14 and 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It's just like he, after I'm seeing is he rather uh, resurrected, but he's the one that's gonna put us in the same place where he was as the state. But now, I think, I, I, uh, so he said, "Where I am, what was he at?" See, he was in a physical body during the time he's talking there. See, now he's in a physical body. See, but he knows Yahweh, and he knows that that him and his father is one. That's where he was at. See, now, uh, see, now, ain't no man ascending in heaven, but he that came down from heaven, he's the same one, same one that's in heaven. So he said, that where I am, there you would be also. See, where he was at, he was, he had the knowledge that his father was in him. He was conscious of his father. And that's where he was at. And that's where he, uh, that's why he, uh, uh, went through that death, so now we can see where we're at, that we don't have to be like him, that he's putting his spirit in us. 
And as many as say it's the reason why, you know, a, a fair, just man, he ain't going to do nothing that Yahshua did. Why? Because Yahshua is living in him, living, he's living, he's the one that's alive. He's the life. Like you got a liver. You ain't never saw, saw your liver, is it? But that's who's doing the living, is Yahshua Messiah. So now uh, I want to go to John, First John, third chapter. First John three and one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Elohim. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of Elohim, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, and that's one of the schools, uh, aims here to help you to find and know Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See, not as you imagine, but the way he really is and the way he actually exists. That's so, right. So, uh, we, I want to uh, read, um, I think this is uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 12 and 13. You just close First, them marks. Okay, go ahead. You said 12 and 13? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I got 12 and 13. Here. So this is 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we are, be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Okay, so that's, see, we are drinking the one spirit, to see, and that, that's the one uh, faith, uh, one Yahweh, see. And uh, I just want to read this, and uh, my closing uh, uh, statements is, uh, I want you to read Matthew uh, 2, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay. All right. So this is Matthew 2. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and according to the time which he had diligently oh, heard of the okay. body. Right there, I just want to show the principle of blood. Here, you got the death of all those kids, right? Okay, read on. Uh -huh. Then oh. was filled uh, that which was spoken by Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, and Ramah, the voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children. And okay, would make... so there's your water. Okay, now read on. And would not be comforted because they are not. But when Harold was dead, behold, an angel of Yahweh appeared. Now there's, there's your spirit. I was just, you know, when I was reading Matthew, I was looking at you got those principles of blood, water, spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is the birth of Yahshua. So you got those 40. Uh, uh, nine months for a child to be born. So I hope that was uh, uh, comprehensible and uh, praise the video, Joshua. And thank y'all for your patience and time. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hello. 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 Yes. This is Lugenia James. Um, I'm trying to get, get in here. The um, Hebrew calendar, like Yahshua, <clears throat> the first month is Abib, which is the day, um, the first month of the year. And um, Mary was conceived with Yahshua in the month of September. And you count from September to the nine months, which would be June. Um, I looked up... Um, a bib and I looked up NASA, and each one of them says in the, in the dictionary that they're the first months of the Jewish calendar, ecclesiastical calendar. So 
um, when you count from um, September, you got October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, which is S I V A N, which is Southern. Southern. So that's the ninth month that Yahshua was born in in June. So that's all I wanted to say also. I was trying to get in there to help them a little bit. But you can look up all of these um, um, things in the um, script, in that pamphlet. The pamphlet is um, the biblical proof of the true birth of Yahshua the Messiah. That's the book. That's where it's showing those different um, names. Well, I say names, but they're different, the calendar months in Hebrew. So if they got that pamphlet, they'll be able to look it up and see what I was trying to say. But thank you very much. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, yeah, if we would have read like the scripture lesson and just like this plate, plate 27 says, uh, thank you, Dr. Grayson and Dr. James there. Um, uh, it says conception, birth and flight. And would you ever read the Bible and say, well, that conception, that's in Nazareth, that's most holy place. And then uh, he's born, that's in Bethlehem, that's like unto the holy place. And then they went down to Egypt, that's like the court roundabout. Would you ever compare that with the tabernacle? <laughs> so you know this man had a vision and revelation, don't you? Yeah. So when you see that conception, uh, the angel appearing, and you have angel in the most holy place, don't you? Yes. But then just like you have that uh, uh, dove over uh, Mary, that's just yes. like Yahweh put his universal spirit law into the creation. You yes. understand? In other words, just like that law was put into the, the Ark of the Covenant, well, that's him placing himself in his creation. I will be what I will to be. You're going to come as a baby. You understand? Mm -hmm. And like you said, it was prophesied. Read yeah. Luke 1. It, you know, we know 126. He got that yesterday that the angel appeared and said, you're going to have a child. You're going to name him Yahshua. He's going to be the child of the most high. But read about 35 or 36, somewhere around there. Luke 135. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of Yahweh. Yeah, read on. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. So what this is, so this is, uh, so when he, he appears in September, uh, which is the sixth month, uh, and Elizabeth six months pregnant. So that means it was uh, April when uh, she conceived uh, Elizabeth with the John. Yes. Now read 39. 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of jo Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now see... Uh, they're in the hill country. So that's still like the most holy place. And then you have uh, Mary and you have Elizabeth. And when they're greeting, it, their, their wombs are touching each other. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, Joshua gives Elizabeth the Holy Spirit while he's in the womb. <laughs> wow. You understand? I mean, it's, it, uh, it's just like the archangels and right you know, right in the Ark of the Covenant. That's where the law was placed. And so that's why they're greeting like that in the hill country. It's fulfilling the Ark of the Covenant and how, what it, and the spirit law and all kind of things. You understand? It's showing the power of the Holy Spirit, see? Yes. And that's a most holy place principle. 
And then was was said, it's conception. So that's all in Nazareth or most holy place. And he went into that yesterday about the branch in Zechariah. And then in Micah 5 and 2, it, he had that read in Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be fat, a little among the fowls of Judah. Uh, that's where he's going to come forth. And he said he's from everlasting. So coming down, and he just showed yesterday again that Bethlehem, Beth means house and Ham means bread. So it's him being born into the holy place. And uh, there ain't no room in the inn because there was no inn back there. He's born among the animals because he's fulfilling Adam being born among the animals. Mm -hmm. And as yes. was said there, uh, uh, <laughs> he, he's born on the sixth day because Adam come forth on the sixth day because it was testifying to Joshua. And as the brother was saying, he so so you see a birth taking place in the holy place there. And he's the light, the bread, and he's the intercession for the world. So he's coming in a fleshly body to fulfill the fleshly things given to Israel. And then he's told to go down into Egypt. So you see, that's the conception, birth, and flight. And Egypt would be like into the court roundabout, just like we show on the Moses chart. See, so he, and, 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 you, and you see that, and angels appear. Why do angels appear uh, uh, and tell the wise men? Because there's angels in the veils on, in the holy place. You understand? Yes. And then he, then he tells them to go down. So you see how it's all, uh, like he said earlier, orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. And so yes. uh, now they're down in Egypt, see. Okay, so... Uh, uh, there's, you know, we know that there's always more. Uh, 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 and I guess if anybody I, wants to add me. anything else, you can do that. I, I just, I just wanted to show one thing. I just wanted to show that if we look at GatesClass.com, they have the pamphlets. So the biblical proof of the birth date of Yahshua the Messiah. It's right in Gates Class. G A T E S C L A S S dot com. And I, I also wanted to ask, like, um, just looking through this plate here, how would I, okay, wait a moment. How would I run, uh, sorry, blood, water, spirit with what I see here? How would I run the light, the bread, the intercessor with what's pictured here? And how would I show, like, like in the tabernacle, it shows the unity, you know, the unity of the spirit. How would, how would I show this looking at what's depicted? Because I thought what we were trying to do is look at the pictures and tell the story with the way the pictures are. I mean, we know the story, but if I'm going to show somebody this chart, how can I run? Where do I? She's already had the baby. Where's Where's the blood? Where's the Where's the water? She's already given birth. You understand what I'm saying? Now I can see the spirit comes to him by night, gives him a warning. Yes, I can understand that. Well, the where's, thing where's, is, the thing is, you're looking at each plate as a plate, as the tabernacle pattern, and okay. you. The next ones you're going to do the blood, water, spirit to get out. You know, I mean, he, yeah, that's how he's born is blood, water, spirit. So, you know, uh, the babies are being killed. He showed that. That's that's blood. You understand? They're down in Egypt, uh, but babies being killed. That's you know, I mean, there's you don't have to. I think the best thing is just to cover what's in the plates. You understand? Um, okay. And, and just see what is there and hopefully you can see it's going by a pattern and how there's a descending. There's a going down and this one's going down because there he's conceived, then he's born, then they go to Egypt. That's the name of the plate. Conception, okay. most holy place. Birth, holy place. Flight, Egypt, court roundabout. That's the simplicity of it. And there's a lot of more stuff you can get into. Yes. But I mean, everything, I mean, he's born by blood, water, spirit. That's the, uh, well, that's every birth, you understand? But then he de yes. declares the 
in from the beginning because the beginning he's born blood water spirit and what happens at the end of his life <laughs> he sheds his blood yeah, yeah. you understand blood Pierce, and inside out right. come blood and water and he resurrects and a gives up the spirit. spirit right you see that but, yes. but we're just doing the plate right now if you know what i mean uh right. uh yeah and so the star appear, appearing that's a light but he is the light of the world even when okay. those angels, that heavenly host came and said, what is that, 2.13, 2, 2.9 of Luke and 2.13 of Luke when he came? Well, it was oh, that? I got it. I got it. I got it. Warning and flight into Egypt. He, what's he running from? He's running for, from Herod and his soldiers. So that's a death and burial. And then when they have okay. the dream, that's the resurrection. I got it. Yay. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise Joshua. Okay, so um, the, the next plate is plate 28, the return of Memorial Passover, and uh, we have Dr. Ruth Samuel from the Detroit Branch School. All right. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And um, thank you for this moment. And I would first like to start off to say that uh, I'm, we will be using the series two plate and it's the plate, I mean chart, it's the divine pattern of the universe, proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation through the dispensation and ages. And we also have a few scriptures that go with that, which is Romans 1, 19 and 20 and Isaiah 8 and 20. And can you read those two for me, please? Sure. You said Isaiah 8 and 20? Romans 1, 19. Romans 1 and 19. Yes. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Okay, so we like to keep that in mind because like I just uh, read to you, it's, uh, uh, it's Yahweh, um, the, the divine pattern of the, of the universe proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation through the dispensations and ages. Now, can you get Isaiah 8 and 20 for me, please? Sure. Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So we will be, so the law is the first five books of the Bible, and the testimony being in Acts 34, which comprises the old, 39 books, which makes up the Old Testament. So we will be taking some scripture from uh, the Law and the Prophet to, uh, to go into the plate. Now, the plate that I'm doing is the Return and Memorial Passover. And it's a downward, op it's a, a upward operation. Sorry about that. It's an upward operation. So we left off with Yahweh with uh, uh, Joseph and then being down here in, in uh, Egypt, see, because they had to fly, that, that's where we left up. At. So when we move over to plate 28, now they're down here in Egypt. So um, we're gonna read what's uh, on the chart. Yeah, thank you. We're gonna go to Matthew, let's see, let's do one, no, two and 15. Matthews 2.15, and Elud begot Eleazar, and Eleazar begot... I think you're not Matthew. reading right. Matthews 2 and 15. Oh, two. I, I said it wrong. I'm sorry. I was in one. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And 2 and 15, and was there until the death of Herod. You think I need to go up a little bit? You can. Okay. Uh, Matthews 2 and 13, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, 
Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Okay, pause, he, pause for a minute. So that's where we're, we're picking, up, picking up the story at. They're down there in Egypt because they had to flee down there because Herod wanted to kill Yahshua or they call it the young child, read. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt mm -hmm. and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by, spoken by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Okay. Can you get um, the scripture, um, I, uh, Exodus 4 and 22? Because he made reference about, so it may be fulfilled. And I want also someone get Hosea 11 and 1. All right. Exodus 4 and 22. Mm -hmm. uh, and now. I'll say unto Pharaoh, thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Okay, we, we keep reading. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Okay, so read um, Hosea. Hosea 11 and 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So that's, and, so that's where, let me see, read the, uh, the next one, next verse. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacri sacrificed unto Balaam and burnt incense to graven images. Ooh, oh. Okay. So my point was, when Israel was a child, then I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. So if you go back to the chart, you'll see where, um, did we read where Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream? You see right there in the, in, where it says, he let him know that Herod had died. So now it's time for him to move, you know, just ad libbing a little bit. Uh, Joseph might have didn't know what to do or when to do or what to do, you know. But Yahweh assured him that he was he was dead. So let's read Proverbs three uh, five through six because you have to trust in Yahweh that He's uh, leading and guiding you, and not lean to your own understanding. So read that for me, please. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And that's what Yahweh did. He directed Moses, I'm sorry, he directed Joseph's path into what to do, you know. And that's how he does us because we, sometimes staying at that um, Red Sea and we don't know what to do. But we have to trust in Yahweh and lean not to our own understanding and uh, he will deliver us from evil. Okay, so can you go also over to, um, it's another scripture here, um, Jeremiah 31 and nine. Can you read that for me, please? And we're still down there in the um, court roundabout. Jeremiah 31 and 9. Mm -hmm. Then shall come with weeping, excuse me, they shall come with weeping and with supplications. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Uh, there's something else talking about the firstborn there. So let's go over to uh, Hebrews 12 and 23, but we're going to have to go up some because, um, yeah, 12 and let's 
let's let's let's go up to um let me see 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and temptness, and sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which the voice they that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Mm -hmm. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Three. This is 22. But ye are come unto Mount Sion and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Elohim, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Okay, to so to the, to the general assembly and the congregation of the firstborn. See, we, are, we make up that body of Yahshua and also the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Now, stay down there. So now you can see, if you go according to the uh, tabernacle pattern, you can see that the death of uh, okay, the death of Pharaoh, not Pharaoh but Herod, and then he was sort of like, I can say, uh, he was asleep, so he was kind of like buried. And then that the spirit or that dream came in and, and, and that's what resurrected Joseph or gave him the confidence to go on into uh, the holy place. So let's go back to uh, where we at. So see, now they're leaving. Now see, I, 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 I see this, um, the tombstone right here, that's showing that death right there where that hair I had died. But I see this water right here and I wasn't able to um, um, know what what river or what what body of water that was, but it made me think about when the children of Israel was coming up out of Egypt, how they came through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And uh, since Joshua is right here with them, he's the one that's 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 really leading them through there. So you come up here to the holy place here uh, in my plate here, 20, 28. You come up here to the holy place and you got Yahshua and the scribes. And they're giving us this scripture, Matthew, the 23rd chapter. But when I look back into uh, the textbook, I saw um, Luke 2 and 46. And so I was kind of confused about that, but I'm just going to go on what um, he did show me about this plate with him being here in a holy place. And he's uh, telling the scribes, he's saying, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Give me a few of those that's going on. He's kind of like, like in the, uh, the, 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 the holy places where the law was given out. And this see, this see, wow. he's sitting there in the middle and he's kind of like, uh, telling them about themselves, you know, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Can you get the twenty three thirteen? And woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, mm -hmm. for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass seas and lands to make one proselyte, and when he is made 
you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Okay, pause right there. So he's sitting there. Now that's Joshua. And in the holy place, you have the lampstand, you have the table of showbread, and you have the altar of incense. So he is the light. He is that bread. And he is that intercession. And that's that holy place right there. Right? So, uh, and like I said, in the wilderness there, you know, he spoke the law down to, uh, to the children of Israel. Or he spoke the law down. So uh, I kind of saw that that kind of went with that also. So then you move up to the, well, read, read, read uh, Luke 2 and 46, because that's the one that's in the, in the, in the textbook mm -hmm. for the holy place. Read that one. It's not on this chart, but it's on the chart in the textbook. And I got a question about that when we finish this. Go ahead. All right. So this is Luke 2, two and 6. And out, of, mm -hmm. right, out of the King James Version. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, asking, no, both hearing them, sorry, both hearing them and asking them questions. Okay. So now we're going to go up to... Uh, uh, the next plate, which is the most holy place. And we're going to read Luke 2, 42 to 49. Okay. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, Yahshua, tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew it not knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. Okay, I and, thought it was interesting. Pause that they 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 had been walking a whole day before they realized that Joshua was not in the midst with them. Okay. Read. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowingly. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wits ye not that I must be about my father's business. Okay, so Joshua at the age of 12 was, at his, was, was about his father's business. And can you read on down to the, to the, um, to the last one, to 52, please? Sure. And they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahshua increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with Elohim and man. Now, he said he was subject unto them. So I'm thinking that as he was a child, he grew up, he, you know, he. If they told him to, you know, Joshua, it's time to eat, just do this, that, and the other. But he, but they us also saying that he increased in wisdom and stature. So just like he was sitting up in the temple uh, with the scribes, he increased in that knowledge. And so, can you can you can you take me to um, the chart twenty eight again, and we go and I show this. Uh, something that I've seen for the holy place. So now he's sitting in the midst. Yeah. <clears throat> now here on in the most, in the holy place he's sitting, but at the top where it says the most holy place, can you go up some please? Most holy place. Can you read the part where it says 
he's in the when he says he's sitting in the mist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Okay, pause right there. He was sitting in the midst. That's Yahshua. That's that light sitting in the midst. And he was both, he, he, read, he was both hearing them and asking them questions. And asking them questions. So that's like he right in the middle. And that's hearing and asking is like that, that uh, the archangels right around that uh, 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 second eye or the, uh, that three and one, if you can see what I'm saying up there in the most holy place, if you, because uh, he's in the midst, he's sitting there in the midst of them and he's, and he's hearing and asking at the same question. So it made me think about the three and one configuration up in the most holy place. Okay, so uh, let me see. I got, can you get uh, Psalms 40 and eight for me, please? And I'm not gonna be too much longer. Psalms 40 and eight. <clears throat> I delight to do thy will, start at seven. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O Elohim. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Okay. So all these things are in the volume of the book, which are the law and the prophets. And they're delighted to do the will or show the will of Yahweh. But Yahweh, he proves his own, he's proved his own existence. We're privy to understand existence. Yahweh has a purpose. We don't have a purpose. We have to get in line with what his purpose is. See, and all the things that we may have in our mind about how Yahweh should be or uh, how he, we hope him to be or want him to be, you know, that's an opinion. And, and, and No, Yahweh has a purpose. And that's why we're here to learn about his purpose and plan as he really is and actually exists. And uh, I just hope that something was said that someone understood. And I hope I didn't, you know, chop it up too much, but I did have, uh, I'm ending it with a question of why was that Matthew's the 23rd chapter put on the chart and the original one, it was Luke 2 and 26. So, if anybody got anything out of what was said, um, all praises to Yahshua. And thank you for the opportunity to make a testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ruth Samuel. Uh, uh, that was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we ought to look at that plate. Uh, and and if, if, again, uh, it's always good to see what's over top of the plates and what they're named. So you see that you got the conception, birth, and flights so that's coming down, of course. And then as you showed, your plate's going up, the return and memorial Passover. So, and remember that, uh, and I remember seeing Dr. Kelly in lecture and Valerie was looking at the thing because you can't see it very well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you return, out of Egypt or how they got out of Egypt wasn't it by a death and a burial well you see them sleeping there that's a death of course <laughs> or like a death but it says Herod's dream uh King Herod's death okay and you know that tombstone it says Herod's burial mm -hmm. that's what that says there yeah mm -hmm. and 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 didn't Pharaoh have to die and be buried in the Red Sea before they could come up out? Mm -hmm. So it's a repeat of the things that happened when they came up out of the land of Egypt. See, I remember hearing a doc lecture of Dr. Kinley. See, he had to, Pharaoh, I mean, just like uh, King Herod had to die so they could leave out of Egypt, just like Pharaoh had to die when the children, of, you know, it had already happened uh, when um, uh, 
So anyway, so you, you know that they're coming out of Egypt and how you come out from the court roundabout is a death, burial, resurrection or blood, water, spirit, of course. Okay, yeah, that was a good research and that's the same thing. If you go in here, it wouldn't be Matthew 23 just because of the progression of the plates. You know, the next one's the baptism and ministry. He's, he's a child there in Matthew 23. He's 33 years old, getting ready for them to <laughs> crucify him. You understand? He's cussing them out. Right. You understand? So it would be the Luke uh, 246, whatever's in the Elohim book. I'm going to go with that, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's 2 and 26. 2 and 46. I'm sorry. Luke 2 and 46. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you start and uh, and and you can see these things kind of being like a round trip too, because uh, with that the plate we just got through with Dr. Grayson there the twenty seven uh, you're going down Nazareth Bethle Bethlehem Egypt well when they came out of Egypt they went back to Nazareth so that's a round trip ain't it and then they go to Jerusalem isn't that what you're reading in that two four at the top there, it has Luke two, forty two through forty nine. Right. Uh, so it says the re, the return and the memorial Passover. So the return is are getting uh, coming out of Egypt, uh, but read the two forty two, and then we'll read the two forty six there. Okay. So this is uh, Luke two forty two out of the King James Version. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And now, when what they, happened before that? What, what does 40 and 41 say? And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and filled with wisdom, filled with wisdom. And the grace of Elohim was upon him. That was 40 and 41 says. Yeah, well, then 30 something must say he was in he was in Nazareth. Yeah. 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 So you see, yep. 39. And when they had performed all things according to the law of Yahweh, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Yeah, so that's them. Uh, so you see where he says the return, and then he says the memorial Passover. And so <laughs> that's why they're going to Jerusalem to eat the Passover. And, and he's 12 years old when he left up our land of Egypt because there were 12 tribes. You understand? And so uh, uh, go and so read on the 41 there. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of Elohim was upon him. And see, and the great mystery is he's been the spirit from everlasting. <laughs> you understand? But he's coming up as a child, though. And like that, well, okay, keep reading. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Now, and why did they do that? Because it's back there under the law that three times you must appear. Uh, you know, and it's during those feast days and those three times of the year and around April and June and uh, in October. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... They're going to the, they're, the, you know, you're going to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. So they're, they're making a circle. You understand? They're in the most holy place in Nazareth. They're going to go down to Jerusalem and they're going to go back to Nazareth again. See how the high priest circled in the most holy place? But go ahead. Uh, keep reading. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, Yahshua, tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they saw him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And there's and a lecture where Dr. Kidley said, Say, you know, they, they're thinking he's in the crowd with them. You know, he's going back just like with it, following everybody else. And Dr. Kinley said, Yahshua, don't lock hands with the world. Right. <laughs> in other words, he ain't following nobody. You understand? Uh, he's, you know, he, he knows what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, uh, but that's at 12 years old. But keep reading. 
And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Yeah, so that's what they got. That, that's the 246 right there. And that's what he's got on the chart there. Mm -hmm. uh, so isn't he sitting there? And, uh, uh, and they got them uh, guys around him. And how many do they have around them? Look at the 12. Well, there's, there's 12 of them around him, ain't it? Or is it? I'm not yeah. sure. 12. And that's Yahshua in the back. Well, that makes the 12, don't it? No. Oh. There's 12 all over. Oh, I seen that one. I didn't the see that one with the gray beard there. <laughs> yeah, so there's 12 of them around there, see? Mm -hmm. Uh, just like you had the 12 tribes in Israel. And, and, uh, uh, and weren't they sitting around the tabernacle? Well, that's him tabernacle. Isn't that in the holy place where the tabernacle was built? And had the 12 tribes around him. So you see him sitting there. So that, so that would be Luke uh, uh, 2, uh, 46 there. Okay. And then uh, keep reading from there. And they all heard him, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt, thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Was she not that I must be about my father's business? Yeah, and is it, isn't the most holy place representing the father? Uh, and so he's telling them what he, who his real father is. His father is, you know, of course, he's the son of Yahweh. Uh, he's Yahweh in a body too, but that's the Yahweh in that fleshly body. See, so he said, oh, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Uh, yeah, that's the age of accountability, too. Uh, so you see him in the most holy place with them, and he's instructing them because he's the Holy Spirit, which is the teacher. And as she was showing, he's standing there. You understand? And they said, and Dr. Kinley said, if they couldn't do the Holy Spirit, doing, of course, if they couldn't do nothing uh, when he's 12 years old, what do you think it was when he turned 30? <laughs> couldn't handle me. Yeah. And I think if you keep reading there, what does it say? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahshua increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with Elohim and man. That was the end of the second chapter. Yeah, so you see that... Uh... Uh, he goes back to Nazareth and the subject was subject unto them. Mm -hmm. And um, why is he subject unto them? Uh, because just like when uh, uh, you read how that, uh, well, you read how that Joseph was subject unto, uh, or, uh, and Jacob was subject unto his father. Well, anyway, I don't want to go there. Uh, or no, it was Joseph, I guess, was 17. So that's where you had the 18 years between 12 and 30. Okay, uh, Graciela put something in the chat. Yeah, okay. I would like us to go ahead and go to volume two, page okay. four, just for the paragraph that's in there um, that starts after Joseph and Mary. Okay, wait a moment. Oh, come on. Okay. Volume two, page four. And this would be in reference to that Matthew 23, because in this section, it says Matthew 2, 23. <laughs> so that's why I was curious. Okay. You said right after Joseph and Mary had stayed in Egypt for 12 years, fulfilling a year for each of the 12 tribes of Israelites in Egypt until the death of Herod, 
They returned back to the land of Israel, and gives scriptural reference, and later departed for Nazareth, where Messiah grew up until the time of his ministry. Then it gives references. This return back to Nazareth of Galilee, the place of his conception, is the same as the Messiah returning back to Yahweh, or pure spirit, from which he was conceived. Hence, the whole round trip from Nazareth to Egypt and back to Nazareth portrays the round trip that Yahweh took from pure spirit to physical manifestation and back to pure spirit. Wow. So I just thought that was a, a good tie-in, and I wanted to bring it to our attention. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's, uh, that really solves the mystery, I believe. So read yeah. the, uh, Matthew 2.23 there. Mm -hmm. All right. So And 21. What's he got? What they got there? Uh, and that's the scripture lesson. Yeah, yeah somebody is. just left out the two. Looks like <laughs> <laughs> I can see where that happens when they're working with something very small. Yeah, it happens. Yep. All right, and it says this: and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father, Harold. He was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of Elohim in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. That was 21... Yeah. Well, I think the one in the Elohim book, though, is the best one, of course, because, uh, you know, you got the 40 plates there and it does do the Luke um, 246 and says that he's sitting there. And that's what that plate shows, Joshua and the scribes. In the midst, yeah. yeah, in the midst there. So. Um, Excuse me, Frank. Yes. Where, um, Graciela left off reading the next sentence after that. Uh, where we were in a textbook, it says, um, Yahshua later went to Jerusalem with Joseph and Mary to celebrate his first Passover at the time he became of age 12, call, called by Mitzvah, and it has the Luke 2, 40, and 46 there also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the other reason why I thought that paragraph was interesting, yes, because it would be looking at that plate. And wasn't yeah. that at the age of 12 was the, I'm sorry, the fulfill Samuel being the prophet at the age 12, he would start um, being a prophet at that age and servicing Yahweh. And that was the fulfillment of Samuel also, the prophet. Mm. Yeah, that would be a good witness. Mm -hmm. Do you know where that is in the Bible? I think that's in second, I don't know if it's first or second Samuel's, it got to be the first or couple paragraph i have to look it up um yeah because he was born probably right around first samuel two and six i think yeah because she was wanting a child in first samuel the first chapter yeah so you can probably find it we looked up 12 in the concordance or <laughs> we could just look for it mm -hmm. well thank right. yeah that'd be a good point there uh, you do see things through the law and the prophets and uh, yeah, and I know Elohim. Samuel means something too. What does Samuel mean? Does that mean Elohim hears? Yeah, Elohim. I heard of Elohim. Elohim and, hears. Uh, wasn't he a Nazarite too? I'm sorry, I can't mm -hmm. hear you. And Samuel said unto the people, "It is Yahweh that advanced mm -hmm. Moses." Okay, when you're reading. Uh, Connor, it's always good to say where you're reading from. Right. You understand? So we all know. Because there's some people that aren't looking at a screen. You know what I'm talking about? It might be working or something like that. So every time when you're reading, right. it's always good to repeat and say what the scripture is. So that yes, thank you very you much. Okay. I got it. So this that's is how we all that's how we all learn. We were taught these things. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. That's right. That's I get right. It. That's right. All right. So this 1 Samuel chapter 12, uh, verse 6. And Samuel said unto the people, It is Yahweh that advanced Moses. And no, and I that think Lenore just got first 
Samuel 12, but uh, Roman Air was telling us that he was 12 years old. I don't know if that's going to say he was 12 years old then. Oh, where's it say that? You know what I'm saying? That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay, Samuel. And I will say, uh, Roman Air, I don't know if you were there. Uh, thank you for that. We did check that out with that. Uh, but we'll betray them. Yeah. <laughs> and it was in that transcript, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Wanted to, wanted to let you know that. No problem. So, yeah, so thank you. Mm -hmm. What was um, that? I came on late. No, that was yesterday. Oh, that was a couple of days ago. Yeah. We um, were, uh, because uh, Wilbur Trainum was one of the speakers, and uh, we, we said that he will betray him. And uh, oh, oh, and then she, and she saw there is a lecture where Dr. Kinley said they went on the peace mission and there was 33,000 and only had the receipts for 30,000, so there was 3,000 missing. And he was the one with the money. And he said, What's his name? And the people said, oh. We'll betray him. Yeah, <laughs> so thank was, you. Yeah, that was an election. Good to bring. Uh, Bring forth the witnesses. Yeah. So do we catch the twelve? That was, or do we catch that was the why don't you guys? Why don't you guys try First Samuel three four through ten when it talks about uh, Samuel grew and served and when he was about twelve years old. Someone can read yeah, that. That's it. Thank you. You're First welcome. Samuel three and four. Mm -hmm. All right. That Yahweh uh, three and three and oh, they all start weird. Three and four says that Yahweh called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I, but thou callest me. And he said, I call not, lie down again. And he went and lie down and Yahweh called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know that Yah know Yahweh, neither was the word of Yahweh yet revealed unto him. And Yahweh called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, but thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that Yahweh had called the child. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go, lie down. It shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, speak, master, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And Yahweh came and stood and called as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. And Yahweh said to Samuel, behold, I will do things in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house where I began. I will also make an end for I have told him that I would judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile and he, rest he restraineth them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of Yahweh. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and, and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that Yahweh has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. Yahweh do so to thee. And more also, if thou hide anything from me, all things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is Yahweh. Let him do what seemeth good, him good. 
is 12 in anywhere there? Yeah, where does it yeah. say he's 12 years old? Yeah, I don't see it. Because I looked in the concordance just now and it didn't have 12 anywhere. So I don't know. Uh, so I'm just. I will find it and get back to everybody at the next class because I did read read that at the age of 12, he began to service um, in his yeah. life, you know, Yahweh. But it yeah. could be in the transcript or it could, I know it's somewhere that it shows oh. that and it could be confirmed in the Bible too. So I have to look that up. Yeah. Okay. Because I just, because I just got Hannah my yeah. concordance and I didn't see 12. So I'm just saying that. Yeah, but it's but, the fulfillment yeah. of that. And because Dr. Kenley is in one of the transcripts. So I'll look it up and, and share with you. Thank you. Yes, oh, thank you. Excuse me. And what Frank. was the what was it, the transcript it, about Wilbur betraying? What was that transcript? Yeah, that one was uh, was was it Isaiah? Um, was it sixty three? Who it was Isaiah sixty three? Who would it come from Edom? Yeah. Oh. It didn't Mariah okay. Coleman have have a question? She said, no. "Was um, Sam Samuel a Nazarite?" Uh, is that correct, Mariah? Yeah, and she gave the scripture too. I think it was first. Oh, Kings okay. yes, he is a Nazarite too. He fulfilled, and Yahshua fulfilled that too. All right. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any? Uh... Yes. Uh, when we. When Yahshua was baptized of John the Baptist, he's got a bald head. And he was all that was fulfilling the right of a Nazarite. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, if there's nothing more for plate 28, then plate 29 is where that's going to be. And that's the next one. Um, uh, and I think uh, I know you don't have much time, but no. uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you want to start that. But yeah, Nora I, and I, Lucy yeah, were I was try. supposed to be working on it, but I didn't. I didn't look at it yet. I didn't know you guys were going to be so fast. <laughs> but you know, again, you, you really all with just reading the scriptures. <laughs> it's okay. on there you can it'll tell you what to do more or less you know, okay so this is what's in the um, let me see yeah. what this is so this, this is, plate. is the plate 29 it's called the baptism and ministry plate and it looks like it's um going up it shows in the court roundabout that yashua's body is a prepared sacrificial body then it shows, so, um, and he's the lamb slain from the creation of the world. So that's showing forth a death and a burial. And then it, he comes to um, the baptism and that shows forth, Yahweh says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And it shows that he's uh, overshadowed, uh, recognized by the Holy Spirit. And this is John baptizing him. And then in the holy place, it's, it's called, it says temptation. And, it's, and he's um, speaking to Satan, who's wearing a lovely pink outfit. And he's saying, <laughs> <laughs> in, in my father's, you know, in my father's house is, is many mansions. And it's, it's showing Satan and Yahshua. And that is a con controversy in the wilderness of Judea. And Yahshua has been, uh, what's the word, um, fasting for 40 days. And it shows back here, um, uh, over here, there's a principle of 40 in the holy place. And there's a principle of 40 because they were there being punished for 40 years because they did not believe the promise. And when they were sent forth to look at the uh the holy land at the at the at the promised land they looked at it and they said it's a great land they even brought witnesses back from the land which i always thought in my mind what happened to those grapes that was so big that it had to be 
you know, especially Carrie, you know, whatever happened to them, they must have, somebody must have eaten them. So anyway, because they said, oh, this is too great, we cannot do it, and they were crying, and they were getting ready to kill um, Yahshua and Caleb, the ones that stood up and said, and Caleb said, yes, we can have it. Because they were in a, an unbelief, Yahweh said that you will go through this wilderness for 40 years, your elders, the ones that were down here in Egypt that, you know, that were born in Egypt, they're going to drop off. And the second generation, they're the ones that are going to receive the promise. So you see over here that Satan, again, is, is um, causing a contra controversy in the wilderness of Judea. And this is what you got to understand. That ministry of iniquity that was in the Pharaoh and his and his soldiers, even though the bodies died there in the Red Sea, that negative spirit goes goes into the people here. And that's what's causing them to have, Yahweh calls it an evil heart of disbelief. When you don't believe him, he is angry at you because he has proven himself over and over again. I'm the dependable one. So Yahshua is the light of the world. He he is the bread. And he said, go and make, you know, go and turn these stones to bread. And, and the stones represented that when they got over um, into the into the new land, they were supposed to show a, a place that they had crossed and, and they were supposed to, to put a, a stones there to, to represent the bread. And then, so he's, so then, so then they go, forget about those stones. Okay, so then they go to the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew, the fifth chapter. We can read through that because this is, Yahshua, Yahweh spoke to them from the Mount, from the, from the Mount here when they got into, let me see. Uh, Yahweh, Yahweh originally spoke to them from the Mount and then this is showing that Yahshua was again speaking to them from the mount. Uh, okay. And we can read Matthew, the fifth chapter. Oh, yes, Dr. Baker. Uh, yes, I'd just like to share something that I, I went through my phone about Samuel being 12 years old. And uh, it says, how, was Samuel, how old was Samuel when he was called by God? One night, Samuel heard a voice calling his name. According to the first century Jewish historian, Josephus, Samuel was 12 years old. So Yeah, uh, I, I, found, I found that too. Yeah, that in history, they say he was 12 years old. Right. But it would have been so nice to see it in the book. But yes, right, I did see right. that too. Okay, I'm going to make okay. mention. Okay, I have something, guys. Right here on okay, Luke good. 2. Luke the second chapter 41 uh how it says now his parents went to jerusalem every year at the feast of the passover and when he was 12 years old they went up to jerusalem after the custom of the feast and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned the child yashua tarried behind in jerusalem and joseph and his mother knew not of it mm, does that work no yeah you see, yeah we see that yashua was 12 years old we wanted to see did samuel start when yah when yahweh was talk coming to him in a dream was he 12 years old yeah that's, so that's what we wanted to see i've been saying in that principle with the age of accountability being 12. yeah but we wanted to know whether it was like written you know Pen and ink in the book. I'm still searching. Okay. Thank you. I think it's in a transcript. I'm going to look for that transcript. I'm at work right now, you guys, but I did read that. And Dr. Kimberly, he explicitly said that he was 12 years old. Okay. So, okay. But thanks. I'm thanks, gonna, thanks for Thank I'm you. Gonna, for I'm just, I always like to provide proof. So I will find that transcript. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so we could go back. And we could look at the scriptures. It's um. Let me see. Isaiah fifty-three. 
Oh, Isaiah 53. Yeah, can we get that, please? Oh, yeah, I can get it. Isaiah 53. Oh, good. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Isaiah 53 and what verse? You could you, I guess it says 53. So could you just start reading it? Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So right there is saying, who's going to believe our report? We're, we're, we're talking about Yahshua came to fulfill the law and the prophets, but who believes it? And who is the arm or the strength of Yahweh revealed? He's going to grow up as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. And when Yahshua appeared to his own family, they would say, who are you? You didn't go to school. You know, they were very unimpressed and they, they were ready to uh, get rid of him. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty which we should desire him. And um, just to take it nowadays, when people see our buildings, when people see, um, when they come into, uh, you know, among us, they say, well, what is this? You come in, you got this crazy cartoons all over the room. What is this about? So it doesn't have any form or comeliness. We should see them. And I remember even Dr. Gill said, you know, it's like, that's your church? You know, he's looking at the physical building. And, and being a Catholic, being seeing the beautiful, you know, places that we had, you meet at the Y? You know, if these are God's people, he can't do better for you than that. Anyway, can you keep reading, please? Three. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed and was and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. When they brought him up to Pontius Pilate, when he brought him up to the different people, he just had little to say because he had a job to do. Continue. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the, out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. So he comes in and he's a he's an innocent sacrifice and he is the only acceptable sacrifice. When you look all the way back, when you think of Abraham and he had to offer up his son and his son willingly lays down his life and his son carries the wood just as Yahshua carried the cross. But Isaac is not the acceptable sacrifice. There's going to be one, a begotten son of Yahweh. That, that life force was put within his, his mother, Mary or Miriam. That's going to be the one that's a acceptable sacrifice because you can't clean something with a dirty rag. You know, if I'm, 
if you are cleaning up oil after, you know, cleaning up the red that you use to clean up the oil after you change your oil, you don't use that to uh, wash your dishes or to clean your kid's face. His, the sacrifice had to be clean. Keep going, please. Nine. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in, in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. See, the way Yahweh has set it up, there is, there is, a, there is a payment. There is a, a something that has to be offered. It's not like, oh, that's okay. He's, he's not going to cover it over. Something had to be offered. And the thing that had to be offered was his, so, his own son, a pure sacrifice. And if we are going to be living in the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy, there has to be a cleansing in our heart and mind. And that's what his sacrifice was for. So can you keep reading? 11 verse. Ooh. He, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, we can just finish. I didn't realize it was 1201. Okay. Okay, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear them iniquity bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So he's the, he's the innocent sacrifice. I'm gonna turn this over. We're gonna continue with this. I gotta talk with Lucy. All right, um, I'll turn this over to the um, moderator. Thank you. Hallelujah. We had up to 50 attendees today and it's always a wonderful class. We thank everyone who participated today in our class. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, um, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in England. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless from the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, who in glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times and now and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Good morning. Uh, Lenore, Hallelujah. 